How's it going everyone, it's Vivi and welcome to a Ratchet & Clank video. Should we expect a brand new Ratchet & Clank game for the PlayStation 5 now that it's confirmed to release for Holiday 2020? Absolutely. Am I saying this based on actual confirmation? Absolutely not. There are two things that keep the future of this series very bright. The sales is one. It's the best-selling Ratchet & Clank game produced by Insomniac Games after a crack in time. And two, Ratchet & Clank is now vital, according to ex-chairman of Worldwide Studios, Sean Layden. So what now? Good sales, it's vital, it's important to Sony. What's next for Ratchet & Clank? Well, naturally, rumors pop up left and right. If you look up any rumored list of PlayStation 5 exclusives, Ratchet & Clank is bound to be on there somewhere. The majority of the time, rumors are simple wish lists by fans. They try to make it look legitimate, either with the fancy words, or simply by making it anonymous. There's one rumor circulating around Reddit these days. Not only does it quote-unquote leak PlayStation 5 exclusives, but it does bring up a bunch of specs for the PlayStation 5 which are very questionable. There was one where it mentioned Gran Turismo 1 running at 120 FPS with ray tracing. What? It doesn't work like that. Note, this list of rumor I'm referring to from Reddit, it got taken down by the moderator. Why? Because of all of the hardware-related stuff which sounded very questionable. But our focus lies here. A brand new Ratchet & Clank game for PlayStation 5. I managed to take a screenshot before the list got taken down. But Vivi, what's the point of covering it? If the list got taken down, it's fake, right? It's very likely that it's fake. But if you ever stumble upon it again somewhere, I thought it'd be worth to at least discuss it. And to try and understand why this is most likely fake. Let me read this. New Ratchet & Clank from Insomnia Games. Start of a new trilogy and a sequel to the future series. The game has been in development since before the 2016 remake was released. This game sees the return of space exploration, hover boots, and competitive multiplayer, which could be free to play. Still being decided. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? The only true part, if anything, of all this is, well, the most logical thing. A new game, of course. That we can expect, but the way this was described, at least part of it really, uh, is questionable. It's not the continuity that uh, makes this suspicious. You know, a game post into the Nexus, okay, I'd like to believe that. But the supposed time of its development is where it gets at. Uh, that's where we get skeptical. So you're telling me, this trilogy, three games, whatever phase each game were individually during development, it was actively being developed before the release of the 2016 game? No way. Space exploration, hover boots, and competitive multiplayer sounds fine and dandy. I would absolutely love for all of those things to return. The only thing that worries me about multiplayer is that it takes away too much time of the main story development, if you understand what I mean. Fun fact, during a livestream of Insomnia Games, a question was asked regarding the feel of gameplay if ever they would make another game. Like, what would they decide to do? Insomnia Games admin in the chat had said the following. Something along the lines of a crack in time and a PS4 game mixed together. Hey, I'm not saying this is full proof of what we'll get as a result in the end, not at all. But just think that this idea has been thought of within the studio, so that's a very good thing. So back to what I was saying. I could believe hover boots and space exploration returning. A crack in time had hover boots and space exploration. That game was critically acclaimed. A crack in time is fantastic. As for the PS4 game, it could influence the game's visuals. But please? Give more life to the characters during some scenes? Okay, I don't want to see those emotionless faces. <laughs> I just had to say that. Now all this, being developed before the launch of the 2016 game? In terms of mechanics, actual modeling, you know, heavy development? That really doesn't make sense to me, and here's why. According to an interview done by Push Square with studio director Chad Desern regarding the 2016 game, the team wasn't sure about the outcome of the 2016 game, whether or not it would secure the future of the series. At this point, we feel like we have a sturdy foundation to work from. Maybe it goes forward from here, but we don't know yet. We're still basking in the warm reception to this one. This interview was posted back on May 6, 2016, almost a month after the launch of the 2016 game. Desern said maybe it goes forward from here. That to me sounds like they weren't sure on where to go next. There's also the post-mortem that happened, 
which got posted on May 16th, 2016. Again, Chad Desern said this, Where does the Ratchet & Clank series go from here? At this moment, we have no idea. We're walking around with VR headsets, strapped to our faces. Another hint at this is Brian Algeyer, who was creative director of the Future Saga, during a 2018 livestream. When a question was brought up about a possible prequel, by the way, that was me who popped the question in the chat. James Stevenson, community leader, was like, well, a prequel wouldn't really be a Ratchet and Clank game. As a response to that, Brian Algeyer, he didn't straight up say, well, talk about a prequel, but he did mention something interesting as a response. I'll play the clip for you. Anyway, in terms of prequel, uh, who knows where the future of Ratchet and Clank. That said, I think Ratchet and Clank are um, important characters. I'm not certain. I don't know. Yeah, well, you know, it's an interesting dilemma uh, because certainly with the recent PS4 uh, game, that was sort of a, a reimagination of the original game. Right. So, you know, does one continue from the reimagination or does one continue from... Uh, into the Nexus, you know, so. and, and, of course, that's assuming another game ever gets made, because none has been announced. That's but, right. as I have always said to people, Ratchet & Clank do seem to still be pretty popular, thanks to all of you guys buying lots of Ratchet & Clank games. So, I can't imagine they've had their last adventure, but we don't have anything to announce on that front. He's debating between a post Into the Nexus game or post-2016 game, and this was back in 2018. Unless development from the rumor means early production, you know, brainstorming, writing stuff on paper, trying to figure out the intended audience for their new game. I don't believe this new trilogy has been worked on since, at least actively, let alone one game stand alone. Disregard the trilogy, I just don't think a game was being worked on that early in time. Times can change. The 2016 game, if ever, they were already brainstorming before, Another idea for a Ratchet & Clank game before this whole movie based on a game thing? Well, their minds can change, it's natural. The reimagining happened because the movie gave them the opportunity. Regarding this topic about the movie based on a game, sure, well, we know we have the feature film coming out. And to us that represented a golden opportunity to tell the ultimate version of Ratchet & Clank's origin story. We knew we wanted to make the game on PlayStation 4 and hit a visual bar that's a lot higher than anything we've been able to achieve before on previous platforms, but at the same time, we never wanted to make just a remaster. We knew from day one that we wanted to effectively make a new game that was built on top of the foundation of the old game. They knew from day one. That tells us, for a long time, they had anticipated, they had imagined a reimagining of the first game. Some people call it a remake, but technically, seeing as how the story has changed, Insomniac Games likes to call it a reimagining. You know, the story reimagined. With modern visuals and controls, of course. And by doing a game in that sort of fashion, it would give them the chance to introduce Ratchet & Clank to a brand new audience. The movie gave them the opportunity. They thought it was the perfect time to create what they wanted for a very long time. As an end result, in terms of sales, it did absolutely great. But with that comes the dilemma. As Brian Algeyer was saying, continue with the new audience in mind, aka a game post-2016, or just scrap the 2016 canon. You know, continue post into the Nexus. What I mean by canon is, well, what timeline are we supposed to focus on from now on? We have the classic timeline with the classic game, and now we have the reimagining. Does the future saga still count as part of the story? Yes. If Insomnia Games goes back to that timeline, like I just said, if they decide to make a game post into the Nexus. If let's say they start making remakes of Going Commando and Up Your Arsenal, you know, sequels to the reimagining, well, the extent of changes in terms of story is what will determine whether or not those games still tie in with the timeline we know and love. If they ever decide to redo Going Commando and Up Your Arsenal, you know, redo the trilogy, I'm imagining a reimagining, the story reimagined, rewritten in a different sort of way, as to not cause confusion for newcomers. On the topic of the whole canonicity thing, here's what uh, Desern had to say. The game is told from Quark's point of view. It matches the film's story, but Quark adds commentary, and it's his vision of events to a certain extent. At the same time, we think that the main story beats are there, the big tent poles, like Ratchet's origin as a Lombax orphan, Clank's origin as a factory defect, 
are still there. And none of it invalidates later games. We didn't set out to rework the canon. In other words, the future series is still canon with everything else subsequently, assuming part of the canon as well. The new game is just more of a cleaner retelling of sorts, don't freak out. Although Insomniac Games believes so, us fans, we start wondering about Shiv Helix, for example. Where does he fit in all this? We understand that you guys went with the Ratchet being an orphan, Clank's origin being a factory default, we know that. But think again, there was no Shiv Helix in the 2002 game. Plus, during this scene, we have Quark stop narrating. We just have Ratchet and Quark, on scene, going together to try and look for Shiv Helix. Unless they want us to believe Quark is also narrating this part, somewhere in the future in the timeline we know? The classic timeline? Even if so, the way the story was reimagined, it's just... Am I wrong to say that the majority of long-time fans aren't a fan of the way it was handled? I mean, I'm just saying, they should just scrap the 2016 game and just continue with Post into the Nexus. What I believe they're afraid of is, you know, starting confusion. If we make a game post into the Nexus, the newcomers will get all confused, because they haven't played the games prior. What I'd like for them to do, and they're actually on board with this idea, but they usually don't handle this. They would love to see all games ported onto the PS4 or PS5. That way, newcomers can pick up that collection, play the games prior, and then play the new game that comes after into the Nexus. That's my wish, right there. Seeing as how Ratchet & Clank is now vital in Sony's eyes, Sony might consider a huge collection for either the PS4 or PS5, and with that release a new game that comes after. Next point I want to cover. Is it possible that before this whole movie based off game scenario, they had planned a different Ratchet & Clank game? Possibly. Could the 2016 game have changed their minds or perspective on things? It's possible. Plus, don't forget, Insomniac Games had other projects to tackle as well. Marvel Spider-Man PS4 started development in 2014. They were also working on three VR games. As Desern said before, they were busy with VR, strapped to their faces. There was Edge of Nowhere, Feral Rights, and The Unspoken. If this rumor was referring to actual active development since that time, no way. It just sounds way too overwhelming for the team, let alone a trilogy. If anything, the trilogy part is what convinces me that the development word simply means brainstorming. But even with that, the information showcased on Reddit, to me it doesn't make sense. Long story short, no, I do not think a trilogy, going by the rumor, was being worked on during that time, despite Insomniac Games owning two studios, one in Durham and the other in Burbank. Disregarding the rumor, I still don't think a standalone game was being worked on. Is it possible they had brainstormed a game before the whole movie slash game tie-in? Yes. Could the reimagining have changed things? Possibly. In the end, the movie gave them the opportunity to give life to what they were anticipating for a long time, a rewritten story of the classic game. Insomniac Games was already busy with a bunch of projects during that time. That's two and three. Insomniac Games is wondering what direction they should take, implying that no, a new Ratchet & Clank game wasn't being worked on. Last couple of things I'd like to say, as I said before, Ratchet & Clank is vital. So do expect a new Ratchet & Clank game, it's only a matter of time. Yes, I know we haven't had a Ratchet & Clank game compared to the rate at which games used to release, but hey, remember, Insomniac Games developed Marvel Spider-Man. It took him four years, and that game is their best seller. Yes, it did beat Ratchet & Clank in terms of sales. We're in an era where Insomniac Games is focused on multiple projects. They're no longer just working on Ratchet & Clank, you have to keep that in mind. And if anything, they have multiple teams right now, two studios. They could be working on multiple projects. So a new Ratchet & Clank game right now, being worked on as we speak, it sounds more likely. But a game being developed along with the 2016 game and other projects they were tackling, no way. By the way, the 2016 game took them less than a year to develop. It had to coincide with the film's release. We needed to make a big game that blew away our previous efforts. It needed to sync up with the just getting started film, and we needed to ship it in 10 months to line up with the movie release. 10 months. Why? Due to the movie. The 2016 game is a game based off the film. I hope Insomniac Games sees it that way. I hope they leave it alone and just focus 
on the timeline we're used to. So with that being said folks, this is it for the video. I've said a lot, but hey, I always wanted to make a video covering Ratchet and Clank and, you know, PlayStation 5. So yeah, with that being said, leave your own thoughts in the comments section below. Questions or stuff like that, leave it all in the comments, okay? As always, I've been Vivi and thank you so much for your support. Until next time.